Rub up your engines! All right, here's a 12-year-old F-150. The guy's the original owner. He's getting noises that nobody can figure out. At least they say they can't. The Ford dealer can't figure out. So let's take it for a ride first and get a general idea where the noise is coming from. It's a funky noise that's made when you're accelerating, especially uphill. If at least it'll make it going up this hill here. I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> you can really hear it now. All right, we got to figure out what it is. Now, I definitely heard the noise coming from under here, so let's do a physical check first. So we're under. Well, we're going to do the old hammer test. Here's the most obvious thing is there's a catalytic converter on each side. So let's whack them. Now that one sounds pretty solid. Let's move to the other side. Get under here. Here's the driver's side cat. Now, for a second there, I thought I heard a sound, so let's start it up. Now, if you notice, this is four-wheel drive. I kind of have a feeling the noise is coming from the transmission or the transfer case. So, the noise master. Now, as you can see, it's got six channels, or six plugs, and six sensors. So, we're going to clamp number one on the transfer case, and number two on the transmission. Nice, solid clamps there. Now, they're both connected. Number one on a transfer case, number two on a transmission. So, we can check them by going between one and two while we're driving. So the sound will travel up through the device and we'll try to replicate the noise. We can switch it back and forth. Now we're going to listen to the noise while we drive. Here's the headphones. There we go. And that's more on number two. I kind of figured it was a transmission to begin with, but this is all wheel drive. So you got a transmission, you got a transfer case, but you saw that it went to the red. The red shows sound too. And when I stuck the microphone of the camera into the earphones, you could hear that. So not the greatest news for the owner. Well, let's get out my scan tool and see what the transmission data is anyway. This was an $89 tool from Amazon Noise Master. Definitely worth the 89 bucks. Six channels. You can find any noise. And the cool thing is, not only do you hear it with headphones, but you get to see it with the LEDs, green, yellow, red. The only transmission thing we find is here. We have a failure of contact plate general circuit. Now, if you get enough vibration from bearing wear, that can happen to the electronics. Even though it says transfer case, most of the noise is coming from the transmission, but that vibration can feed through and make the circuits go weird on a transfer case, too. The computer knows there's something electronic going on in the entire transmission system. So let's go to the transmission system. It doesn't have any codes in the transmission. But it does slip a little bit while you're driving. You can feel it slip, but it'll have a little jerky shift. So we're gonna live data. We'll select them all, and we'll take it for another road test. Oh, shut up, you stupid seatbelt. There you go with the live data. While he's driving it, we'll check stuff out. And you can see all this data is really close. There isn't much slippage. You can feel a little shifting roughness, but a Ford this old, you can't expect that. And you can see the turbine shift and the actual shaft speed. They're pretty close here. It's just a tiny bit of slippage. This one's a little bit higher. Now, as I said, it's a Ford. It's got a lot of miles on it. Pretty much typical. It's got wear. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. The noise, though, is an internal noise. Probably a shaft bearing inside the transmission starting to wear. Okay, so now we know it's in a tranny. A decent remanu your transmission starts at about $2,600. You're going to pay somebody six, dollars $800 to install it. You can get used ones for $500 or even less. That's, of course, is a gamble. But with the mileage on this and the age, it shifts good enough. And it's making that noise. Really sounds like a bearing noise. It's in the transmission. You never know how long it'll last. This is now a knock-around vehicle. This isn't a primary driving vehicle. I've seen people have these for another eight years. They don't put much mileage on them. They can still drive them around. What the heck? The owner really doesn't feel like spending 35 to 4500 for a reman or gamble with a $500 used transmission that you have no idea what the mileage is since it doesn't even have any transmission code still working fine starting to get some bearing noise he's gonna see how long the thing lasts rather than put a bunch of money into it now he took it to a Ford dealer they said they can't find out what's wrong it took me 15 minutes to find out what was wrong so it kind of shows you people don't even care these days when they work on your car. I do. This is why I'm making these videos. Buy one of these $89 sound detectors. You can find any noise. Six channels. You can put six 
clamps all over if you're not sure where the noise is to pinpoint it. And then if you do go to a mechanic, plug it on the one that made the noise that says, here's the noise, what's going on? And they can't argue when they hear and see the lights flashing with the noise. You can't beat sound and sight. Like I said, it took me 15 minutes a Ford dealer said, oh, we don't hear anything, we don't see anything wrong. It amazes me these days. Anything can be done by yourself if you want to get a little tool like that. It also works good on houses. You got noises, sounds, pipe, you stick it all over the place and find the noises. You can put it on your wife, see how loud she is. <laughs> and you can make a logical choice and not waste money guessing on where noise is coming from. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Matt 129 says, do frame rust sealants work? I got an old SUV with a rusty, but still structurally sound frame. What about this rust check? He's got a link to rust check. Okay, well, I've never tried that, so I can't say, but here's the thing. You got a rusty, but structurally sound frame. All right, if it is structurally sound, what you really have to do is you got to get rid of all the rust that you can. Get wire brushes. I use air ones on my air compressor and then I just, they spin like mad and I clean it all off. You can use an electric drill. It doesn't work quite as well, but you can put the brushes on them. You got to clean it all off. Then you got to use the sealer and primer, then paint it and that works. But spray on stuff, no. You got to clean the rust off first. You got to all the scale off because if you seal rust in, it'll continue to rust inside. You got to get it off, then you seal it. And if it is structurally sound, yes, do that. But make sure that it really is. Get a hammer, hit it all the way up and down. Because if you find parts that you hit and it goes crunch and moves in, it's not structurally sound and you're wasting your time because it's unsafe and eventually the frame might crack and break down. If it is, got to clean all the rust off first, then you can seal it with stuff. There is no miracle spray it on and it stops. They, I know, I've seen them. It converts rust to primer, a bunch of BS. You got to get the rust off. Then you can seal it. Shimo 99 says, I'm looking at 05 Dodge Magnum 5.7 with incorrect gear ratio. I took it in, I get PL 700, 730, 731, 732, 733, and 734. I babied the car. Everyone says I need to open up my transmission to see what's wrong. I made the mistake of having Jiffy Lube flush it. What do you think? All right, well, unfortunately, they're telling you the truth. One, you should have never flushed the thing. That can cause damage inside. Ever seen a Chrysler transmission that had the incorrect gear ratio codes, which was a bunch of those codes, that didn't have the transmission opened up and repaired. When it does that incorrect gear ratio in almost every automatic transmission out there, when it trips you the code for the transmission that says incorrect gear ratio, it's invariably an internal problem to the transmission and often requires a full rebuild to fix it correctly. You got a what? A 17 year old Dodge Magnum with a big V8 engine and 90,000 miles. It doesn't surprise me at all that the transmission went out. That is a very powerful engine, but the transmission isn't that great. And that's always the first thing that goes out on those Dodges. It's the reason I tell people not to buy them in the first place. There's a lot of other reasons, but that's the main one. So unfortunately, you're going to have to find a mechanic who does automatic transmissions who's not only good, but honest because they got you by the short and curlies. Once they take it apart, you know, you got to trust them. They might find you know, one little problem and then tell you, well, we got to rebuild all things. So you got to find an honest one first and then just hope that it's not outrageous and it needs a full rebuild, which it very well might be with that mileage if it's been driven hard. Daniel 2000 says, when I release my gas at low speeds, the car makes a thud noise. All right. Generally, one of two things. You want to check your drive shafts. If they're worn, when you let go, it'll thud. More commonly, it's a broken engine or motor mount because they're sitting on top of them. mounts are rubber in the middle, metal on the top and bottom. When they fall apart, the rubber cracks. So when you let go of the accelerator, thud, thud, it'll clunk. So I got a video how to replace motor mounts on your car. You can watch that, how to analyze it. You can just put a two by four under the engine, jack it up a little. And then when you jack it up, if you see the mounts open up and there's air in there, they're cracked. You know, you need new mounts. If not, check all the drive shafts. Could easily be a problem in a drive shaft. And you want to pray it's not internal to the transmission or differential assembly because that costs a fortune when they go out. Sensuna says, Scotty, which used car should I buy? Honda Civic or Jazz or the Volkswagen Golf? Forget the Volkswagens, they're money pits, they fall apart in the United States, they cost a fortune to fix. In the rest of the world, yeah, they get parts cheaper, guys are used to working on, but not here in the United States. Go to a Volkswagen dealer, boy, they just love skinning people alive. I had a customer a few months ago, went to a Volkswagen dealer, they told him he needed like 2,500 bucks worth of work, and I fixed the thing for like $400, so, you know, you can't trust the guys. It's just something, that's the way that it goes. The Honda Civics, Jazz, 
is those are excellent vehicles you're talking about something that might go two three four hundred thousand miles the volkswagen in the united states will never go that far it'll cost you a small fortune to repair them Volkswagen has prerogative software that you got to have a Volkswagen mechanic or a guy like me that has very expensive equipment knows how to analyze them and fix them anybody can work on Hondas lots of guys work on Hondas now Honda gives all that data on scan tools out they don't hide it with some crazy German software that has to be interpreted it's the same as any other car and they're really well built I'd go Honda by far for those so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell